Welcome, everyone. A couple of additional announcements before we begin the ceremony. Please silence all electronic devices at this time. And finally, please stand for our procession.
be seated. Good evening, graduates, parents, friends, faculty, administration, and members of the Downingtown School Board of Education. Welcome to the 136th annual Downingtown High School Commencement Ceremony and the fourth for the Downingtown STEM Academy. Class of 2017, as headmaster, I'm proudly, I proudly stand here with you to celebrate your accomplishments. Tonight, we honor a dedicated and, out, and outstanding faculty that has given countless hours to you and your school community. Tonight, we honor each of you willing in the stands, each of you in the stands that, who stood behind our seniors for every day of their lives. Tonight, we celebrate and pay tribute to the years of hard work and effort of our 179 graduates. This year, the senior class was asked to read and reflect on the concepts in the children's book, What Do You Do With an Idea? The author, Kobe Yamada, with illustrations by May Besom. After four intense years of reading weighty and dense volumes of text, a picture book was a delightful and welcome change, yet it still invoked some complex thoughts. In summary, the protagonist grapples with the struggle of having the confidence ambition, and courage to share an idea with the world. Sounds simple enough, right? But this challenge demands opening your heart and sharing your personal creation with the world. This is not a task for the timid. The world can be harsh and critical and unwelcoming to new ideas. Sometimes sharing can be frightening because our ideas may be delicate and unique and reflect who we are. Yamada's story begins with a child who walks away from an idea. Our first commencement speaker this evening had an idea, and thankfully, she did not do the same. In fact, she took an idea and transformed it into something tangible. She is co-president of Model UN and also an organizer of STEM's first TEDx event. Despite the challenging idea of creating a school-wide event, she made it happen with great success. 100 people attended TEDx Journey into the Unknown to listen to notable speakers in the community. It was a memorable event and an idea that I hope to continue each year. Our speaker will attend George Washington University in the fall to study international affairs to further develop her interest in global events. Please give a warm welcome to Malika Yadwad. Congratulations, class of 2017. From the first time we walked through the doors as nervous freshmen to today, we have finally made it to graduation. I want to thank our teachers, faculty, family, friends, dogs, cats, and all of you for making this roller coaster of a journey possible. Let's be real for a second. We're all super excited about today, but honestly, I think most of us are ready to run on stage, grab our diplomas, and then snap a picture for mom and dad, and then get the heck out of here. So as much as you really want to pay attention to this speech and all the other ones after me, I know it might be difficult. But maybe I can hold your attention for a little longer than our laptops can hold onto the Wi-Fi. <laughs> as much as you say you won't miss STEM, you will. Or you will at least miss some aspects. For me, it's the welcoming and accepting environment. As students, we didn't have to be afraid of being ourselves or voicing our opinions. And if we were ever in disagreement, we talked it out through CER. STEM has always welcomed us, our thoughts, and our ideas. That leads me to the theme of this address. What do you do with an idea? Now, I'm no Oprah or even Steve Harvey to offer you my advice, but as your fellow classmate, I can tell you that we do have the experience of managing our own ideas, though we may not have always been conscious of what we were doing. So, as we venture out into the real world and take on the next chapter in our lives, it is important to remember what we do with an idea, because great ideas can change the world. After all, we owe the dab, <laughs> the water bottle flip, and Hamilton to the ideas that originated from extraordinary people just like you all. So let's break it down into a few simple steps that I'm sure all of us have gone through during our time at STEM. Number one, don't be afraid. You can't be. It's your idea, and it came from your brain. So don't be afraid of your own thoughts. You know the most about your own idea, so take care of it appropriately. 
Let it grow as it changes under your care. Experiment with it and mold it into different shapes. That's the beauty of ideas. They're like IAs. You start writing your paper thinking, wow, this is going to be amazing only to realize that it actually makes no sense two days before the deadline. But that's OK. Ideas change all the time. And we have to learn to adapt to the changes. So while we may have taken the first few minutes to panic, we eventually picked ourselves up, stocked up on coffee from Java City, and began to reevaluate our approaches. We embraced the changes as surmountable challenges and ways to potentially improve our ideas. And seeing that we've all successfully submitted our IAs, I think it's fair to say that we pretty much have the skill in the bag. So as we tend to our ideas and watch them grow, we have to remember we cannot overprotect them. This brings me to step number two. Don't be afraid to share your idea. Your idea's growth is only limited to the environment around it. So create a larger space for it to grow in and expose it to different perspectives. You might not always agree with other collaborators and then refuse their advice on the basis of it being your idea. But if there's anything Mr. Taylor and our TLK teachers have stressed the most, it is multi-perspectivity. So we better not disappoint them. When I first shared the idea of organizing a TEDx event at STEM with a few other students, we generally held the same views, but of course we had our differences along the way. Yet, we knew this idea was greater than our own individual opinions and that it was worth compromising to allow for its advan advancement. Needless to say, it is important to be receptive to input and criticism. If we fail to listen to the valuable advice from those trying to help us, we risk stunting the growth of our ideas. Number three, make it happen. Make your idea a reality. You have nurtured it and given, given it all the necessary elements for growth. Now it's time to set it free. So put your effort and hard work into the execution of your dreams. And who knows, you might just become famous for that idea. After months of planning and with the help of our teachers, we were able to successfully host the first TEDx event at STEM this past November. So just as my fellow TEDx organizers and I had done, witness your notes, blueprints, and countless hours of planning metamorphosize into a grand phenomenon. Just remember, all of this is a lot easier said than done. So don't worry if you don't get it right the first time or even the next. Just keep trying, because what matters is that you strive relent relentlessly and face all odds in attempts to bring your idea to fruition. So what do you do with an idea? You pursue it passionately and diligently until it blossoms into a tangible reality because you never know how it can change our world. Congratulations, class of 2017, we did it. Our next speaker is an educator who volunteers her time to support the students of our district. While we all have strong connections with our teachers and administrators, there are many other groups working with us to assist us who, with whom we might not be as familiar. The school board is one of those groups that works tirelessly behind the scenes to ensure that all of us receive a great education. Join me in welcoming one of our most dedicated supporters, our school board president, Mrs. Colleen Cranny. Thank you and good evening. It gives me great pleasure to welcome you here tonight. Graduates, although it may seem like it's been a long road to get to this day, your parents are probably sitting here trying to figure out how it happened so fast. Although this is the end of your high school years, remember that this is a commencement, a beginning of the next phase of your life. What an exciting time. It's our hope that your years in Downingtown have prepared you for whatever your future holds. Carry with you what you've learned here, not only in recent years, but also the great lessons you learned early on. Work hard, share your gifts, be kind, and in the words of Dr. Mazzolini, go make a difference. On behalf of the School Board of Directors, we wish you all the very best in your future endeavors. Congratulations to the STEM Class of 2017.
Every year, the Downingtown Area High School Alumni Association presents a prestigious scholarship to honor a student who has shown commitment to their school community through extracurricular activities and leadership roles. Founded over 130 years ago, the Downingtown High School Alumni Association is the oldest alumni association in the country and continues to uphold education and scholarship. Our speaker today is a pillar of the Downingtown community serving as president of the Alumni Association. Please give a warm round of applause to Karen Mena. Thank you, good evening, congratulations, class of 2017. 41 years ago, around this week, I graduated right out in that field there. We had Jim right here in this gymnasium. Some things haven't changed. I'm sure there are a lot of other alumni up here as well. We congratulate them. And as you have been told, the association has been involved as one of the oldest active alumni associations for the last 133 years. The Alumni Association has supported and continues to support a variety of activities to honor our students and alumni. As new graduates, you will automatically be a member of the Alumni Association. So we welcome you. Come back and visit us after college. We sponsor the annual homecoming programs for all three of the high schools. We sponsor the um, halftime event for the Battle of the Brandywine, hosting and supporting the Downingtown Area School District's Hall of Fame, Thanks to Dr. Larry Mousseline, who supported us in this effort. We are four years with recognizing famous um, people from the Downingtown School District, and it's been quite a success. Each year, we provide a scholarship to one of each graduate out of one of the high schools, and our scholarship is $2,500. So this year, I would, is it my great? pleasure and honor to present this year's scholarship to John Reed. John. Thank you, John. Congratulations. all the there. Thank you very much. Many of us graduating today are 18, meaning that we are officially adults. As adults, we have to make many choices regarding our future. Four of us have made an honorable and brave commitment to serve our country as part of the United States Armed Forces. At this time, I would like to recognize these four students, not only for their decision to serve our country in the United States Armed Forces, but also for, the, for their decision to do so with such conviction now. Please stand and remain standing when I call your name. Aaron Baker, United States Navy ROTC. Evelyn Berez, United States Naval Academy. <laughs> Cassidy Scheibe, United States Army, National Guard. <laughs> Charles Ryan Zendel, United States Army, ROTC. I would also like to ask all of our guests who are currently serving or who have served in the United States Armed Forces to please stand so that we can thank you for your service.
Each year, the Downingtown Area School District honors those who have served in the district for 35 years. This year, we are fortunate to have Spanish teacher, Senora Teresa Madero from Downingtown East High School. She is a lifelong resident of Downingtown and a 1976 Distinguished Honors graduate of Downingtown Senior High School. She has brought knowledge and skill to her classroom through her experience of living and studying in Spain. In her own words, she believes that everyone can enjoy and learn another language, regardless of their background or ability. Thank you, Senora Madero, for helping students to find the confidence and knowledge to make their ideas tangible. You are an important part of the Downingtown Area School District, and your role as an educator will be missed. Senora Teresa Madero, please stand to be recognized. Good evening. We would now like to honor Dr. Lawrence Mousseline with the Recognition of Distinction Award. Dr. Mousseline joined Downingtown Area School District in 2009 and has impacted the district ever since. Without his hard work and diligence over the past eight years, none of us would be here today. By creating a magnet high school, he and his team took a risk and decided to build the STEM Academy. He introduced ideas like collaboration rooms, the knowledge commons, and a school day without bells. And here we are today, the fourth graduating class of an incredibly successful institution. The STEM Academy has not been Dr. Mousseline's only accomplishment. The entirety of our school district has improved in all state and national academic rankings over the past eight years, something which he believes to be his greatest success as superintendent. Like so many of us, Dr. Mousseline was inspired and supported by his parents. His father was a public school teacher and an Italian immigrant who had to make a way for himself. After his father passed away, his mother raised him and taught him to make a difference, a piece of advice he shares with the Downingtown teachers every day. He truly has made a difference in all of our lives by giving us the opportunity to pursue new passions in this different and creative environment. And for that, we thank him. In addition to his noteworthy accomplishments, the students of Downingtown will perhaps most remember Dr. Mussolini's snow day phone messages. <laughs> When asked about them, he told me, what you all heard was my sarcasm towards Mother Nature having the audacity to alter our meticulously crafted school schedule, seemingly changing the course of human events for that school year. How dare she do that? I hate it when schedules that are methodically crafted don't work out. However, according to another source, Dr. Mousseline actually detests school bells and incredibly structured schedules. More sarcasm, maybe? And with that, the STEM Academy is honored to present Dr. Lawrence Mousseline with this award. Thank you for everything, Dr. Mousseline. You will be missed. Good evening. Our next speaker will be attending North Carolina State University and majoring in mechanical engineering. While at the Academy, he served as President of Student Council, Treasurer of TSA, a member of the National Honor Society, a member of the Spanish Honor Society, and an intern for the Philadelphia Phillies. In addition, he traveled to the Dominican Republic to provide sustainable solutions to problems facing the communities on three separate occasions. Please welcome our next commencement speaker, Michael Evans. What do you do with an idea? Just under four years ago, each one of us had the idea to embark on a journey. Maybe that idea was sparked in each of us by the experiences of our siblings or the motivation of our parents. Maybe it was the reputation of the school. Or maybe it was the laptops. <laughs> Regardless of our reasoning, we all chose to follow that idea. Today marks the day that we can look back on that idea and say that we saw it through to fruition. Today, as a class 179 students strong that has shared thousands of Google Docs, debated over whether to use our dot stem or student emails, basked in the glory of being Powderpuff champions, and endured countless hours of IB tests, we're able to answer the question, what do you do with an idea? When we walked through the doors four years ago, we were told that the school is what we make it. Mr. Campbell promised each and every one of us that if we saw something missing from STEM, 
we could implement it ourselves. This philosophy has kindled many remarkable ideas that we have pursued to enhance the culture of our school. Dr. Staub's economic class, for example, proposed partaking in the H&R Block Budget Challenge, an online financial literacy competition. This competition gave students the opportunity to test their knowledge against other students around the country, and members of our class represented well. Not only did three soon-to-be graduates win scholarships for being among the top students in the nation, but the class earned a $5,000 classroom scholarship for their performance as a whole. By encouraging students to follow their idea, they were able to recognize the importance of what they have learned in the classroom. Ms. Long challenged her design tech students to bring their ideas to life too during junior year. After asking each of her students to design a unique children's toy, her students worked for weeks refining, refining their designs. The class then chose three toys to produce and worked together to manufacture hundreds of toys to donate to Toys for Tots. In all cases, students had the vision to apply what they had learned in the classroom to real life situations, or as we know them, RLSs. As a class, not only have we implemented our ideas, we've challenged them for the sake of bettering our community. Take for example our practicums. With guidance from Mrs. Boardman, each of us worked at companies like Comcast, Lockheed Martin, and GE. We each went with the purpose of comparing our ideas of a particular job to the reality. In many cases, our thoughts regarding the fields we wanted to enter were challenged, but we came out with an even better understanding of what we want our futures to hold. Personally, after interning for South Co., an engineering company, I realized the unlimited possibilities that I will have with an engineering degree. I could end up working to solve important problems regarding access to potable water, an issue that my sister has encouraged me to pursue throughout high school. Her idea and support, coupled with skills and knowledge I've acquired from STEM, has encouraged me to go to the Dominican Republic and help to implement sustainable in solutions. Following in her, in her footsteps, I traveled to the Dominican on several occasions. By building bottle houses and distributing water filters to families, I helped work towards a sustainable future. This experience taught me the importance of global engagement and I am certain that my future will impact those around me. With a single idea, you can change the world. Just under four years ago, each one of us had the idea to embark on a journey. Each and every one of us had a special reason for choosing to follow that idea. Regardless of if that initial reason was the one that kept us going, we are able to look back and realize what the schools meant for us. STEM has given us the tools to be effective communicators, researchers, collaborators, and innovators. Because we pursued our ideas, we are prepared to take a step forward in our lives and careers. So I ask, one final time, what do you do with an idea? Throughout the last four years at STEM, with every up and every down, the class of 2017 has demonstrated the importance of pursuing your ideas. Our ideas have, and continue to, shape the distinct culture that is ever present at STEM. When you have an idea, you grow that idea and make it a reality. Congratulations, class of 2017. Tonight, we leave champions of the ideas we've realized, but more importantly, champions of the Downingtown STEM Academy. Good evening. As a member of the Downingtown Orchestra program since third grade, I am proud to introduce the STEM Academy's music department. This year marked Ms. Stephanie Gonzalez's first year as the orchestra director. Her passion for music is reflected through her dedication to her student's success, and today the orchestra will play Legends of Glory by Katherine Greisinger. We all know Mr. Brian Lloyd, the STEM Academy's choir director. He brightens our days with his music playing in the hallways and us to and guides us to create original songs. He has been an important and positive element of this institution since the beginning. Under his direction, the STEM Academy Choir will perform For Good by Stephen Schwartz, arranged by Mac Huff from the musical Wicked.
Good evening. It is my honor tonight to introduce our next speaker. Next year, she will be attending the University of Pittsburgh, where she will double major in pre-medicine neuroscience and Spanish. For her practicum experience, she shadowed at a neuroscience lab at the University of Pennsylvania. And this summer, she received a research stipend at the Children's Hospital of Philadelphia in the Department of Neurology as an intern shadowing a doctor. She was a member of the National Honor Society, the Spanish Honor Society, Downingtown East Cheerleading, Greek Orthodox Youth of America, and Key Club. Please join me in welcoming Alexia Ritchie. Good evening, classmates, family members, teachers, administrators, and everyone who helped to make this day possible. The inspirational author Kobe Yamada proposed the question, what do you do with an idea, in his book with the same title. Now, in true STEM Academy fashion, my initial reaction was to analyze the symbolism, imagery, and other literary devices employed throughout the work, complete with claim, evidence, and reasoning, but don't worry, I won't subject everyone to that. Instead, I'll share a few thoughts. As a child, I vividly recall that every morning during the announcements at East Ward Elementary School, our principal, Dr. Furman, would say, make it a great day or not, the choice is yours. At first, it struck me as odd. Why wouldn't you just tell us to have a great day? But then I realized what she meant. Each day, we make conscious choices about which ideas and actions we bring to the table, and it's up to us to decide which of these ideas will shape our future. And it's true. Our choices really do affect our futures, which was evident for each of us when we accepted our admission to the STEM Academy. We chose to journey into unfamiliar territory. Just by being students at STEM, we challenged the status quo. We consciously stepped off of the traditional high school path in search of a place that would nurture creativity and innovation, because this type of environment is where our ideas would become reality. I remember the nervous energy in the halls that characterized freshman year, with none of us knowing how exactly this transformation would happen. But over the past four years, many of our ideas have already led to incredible achievements. We've conducted original research projects on topics ranging from sound acoustics to the housing market, to evolutionary psychology. We've pursued our own interests, fueled by our ideas, by starting new clubs and organizations, like UNICEF Club, STEM Hacks, and TEDx, that made STEM feel like home. We sought to put our own mark on previously existing ideas as well. We found new, creative ways to increase participation in Camathon, and as a result, the event raised more than $66,000 for pediatric cancer research this year. By putting our heads together to better our strategy from previous years, we finally became Powder Puff champions for the first time. Well, for the first official time. These are just a few of the many things we've accomplished as a class. Our experience at STEM has shaped us into innovators and leaders. And in turn, our unique ideas further shaped our STEM experience. We have tackled these past four years both as a community and as individuals, unafraid to stand out with our own unique ideas and willing to embrace the ideas of our peers. In today's society, advancements are constantly being made in areas like technology and medicine. We have literally grown up with the world at our fingertips. For many, it's easy to become complacent and simply take advantage of the ideas generated by others. It's easier to allow our own ideas to wither away because we fear the judgment of others or we don't want to do the work to bring our ideas to life. It can be tempting to just walk away from your idea or act like it doesn't belong to you. But this does not describe our class. 
we have already chosen a different path. Our education at the STEM Academy has encouraged us to think differently. It has inspired us to stand out, to be creative and original. And with the world at our fingertips, we cannot and will not be complacent. It is our responsibility to not only generate new ideas, but to also see them through to maturity. I cannot wait to see what the future holds for each of us. I know that in our future endeavors, we will continue to be the critical thinkers who see the world from different perspectives. With this in mind, I initially plan to tell you all what I hope for our futures. However, upon further reflection, I realized that hope, although a beautiful thing, should be reserved for situations over which we have no control. For example, I hope that we would have an outdoor ceremony today. So, no, I will not hope anything for our futures since each of us has the power to determine his or her own path. Instead, I challenge myself and all of you to choose to have the confidence to be bold and creative, even when the popular opinion disagrees. I challenge us to have the courage to follow our own dreams and intuition, even when they lead us outside of our comfort zones. When it comes to an idea, Toby Yamada says, it's okay if it's different and weird and maybe a little crazy. We're willing to work hard. We've certainly shown that. We have the passion, the skill set, and the outstanding foundation. We're collaborative, open minded, determined, and we all have some ideas of our own. So, what do we do with those ideas? Just as I was reminded each day on the morning announcements in elementary school, the choice is ours. So, we must choose to embrace them, continuously nurture them boldly share them, and then watch them change the world. All right, getting close. Not so long ago, this very institution was only an idea. An effort creates intelligence, was the vision. Inquiry-based questioning, collaborative learning, student freedom, and trust that it, all, it would all somehow happen form the basis of the idea. Collaboration rooms in a high school were unheard of, and the ability to have blended classrooms with teachers available, both online and in person, was a new and different idea. The idea of a magnet school is a different concept for schools in this area and the focus on STEM fields was unique and different. The International Baccalaureate with its staunch rigor, comprehensive college prep program and liberal arts balance was another facet of the idea. The component of requiring students to participate and learn key soft skills applications, followed by a practicum experience with our partners was also an entirely new concept. Kobe Yamada's New York Times bestseller shares, there was something magical about the idea. If all this could work together, the, the idea would indeed be magical. After decades of use, the once Downingtown High School st stood dormant, dark, until the idea took up residence. Where the welcoming seating and windows of the Knowledge Commons presently reside was a wooden basketball court where Mr. Jones played many a basketball game. Collaboration rooms did not exist, and Java City and pre-ordering lunch options were just scratch notes on paper. Ideas of collaborative work areas and a no-co that was not to be a typically silent library with just four chairs to a square and five chairs to a round were vague notions. <laughs> I knew about that. Classrooms filled with oddly shaped desks and benches and hallways invited students to sit and chat were only visions in the minds of those nurturing this idea. Now the walls, ceilings, and floors retrofitted with miles of electrical and internet cables stretched and hidden throughout the building. Updated additions serve both function and appearance. Fair enough, the auditorium is pretty much the same. For now. Thank you, school board. <laughs> in those lockers. They have served generations, literally generations. 
The spiral stair- staircase that was planned to go from the stucco to the noco and open ceilings and walls were not, complete, were not completed as originally designed, which reflects the reality that not all parts of an idea work out exactly as they are initially planned. And much like the children's book, when fear and doubt plagued the idea with, they said it was no good, they said it was too weird, they said it was a waste of time, and it would never become anything, they were wrong. The ambiguous they might be those who question change, those who fear growth, and even our own self-doubt. This school and its principles of education, including growth mindset and constant innovation, stood up to that doubt. Yamada says, it's okay if it's different and weird and maybe a little crazy. And many thought that the idea of a STEM IB school was crazy. Whether it was the fast-paced time frame that only Dr. Musling can command, or the formidable task of forming ongoing partnerships with area businesses to provide practicum experiences, or the IB trainers telling us we were crazy because the IB program was never meant for as many as 400 candidates in one school. We made what seemed impossible possible. We accept the fact that we are different, sometimes weird, and maybe a little crazy. The STEM Academy idea was doubted during the planning phase, much before it was opened, and even years after students and teachers filled the classrooms, collab rooms, Stuco and NOCO, but the energy surrounding the idea is contagious. Year after year, improvements take place. This is where you, the class of 2017, took up the challenge. You agreed to excel in the demands of the STEM Academy. You upheld the newly formed traditions and made your own legacy. You found the connection between the sciences and the humanities. You discovered a routine in the high demands and comfort in the friends surrounding you. You obtained balance in learning and questioning in that of observing and listening. You experienced rare and important opportunities, some of which you will only know the true value of years from now. You as a class have earned over $23 million in scholarship money. Round of applause for our graduates. I would say that you were challenged, and I would certainly say you've succeeded. Maybe along the way you had some doubts, like the boy in the story, but the premise of education is encourage us Encourage me to think big, and then to think bigger. And so we thought bigger. Dr. Muslim, before it was our idea, it was yours. In your final days with us, we want to take the opportunity to applaud your idea. I read that at least a hundred times so it wouldn't happen. Oh well, sorry. Uh, Dr. Muslin, thank you for your passion, commitment, and perseverance. We know without you, we wouldn't be what we are today. The book states, I could not imagine my life without this idea. Moving forward, our students and teachers will continue nurturing this idea, helping to evolve and to transform into the next stages. After all, Dr. Musling tells us, if you aren't moving forward, you're falling behind. Seniors, I need you to do something. You see, the idea doesn't stop here when you depart tonight. In fact, the idea must continue with you, and the first phase is already in place. As 73% of you are going on to college and have claimed undergraduate areas in the STEM fields. Good job. Take this idea from being here to being everywhere. It isn't just part of you or me anymore. It is a part of everything. The last line of Yamada's story is, and then I realized what you do with an idea. You change the world. Class of 2017, take what you have learned here, take this idea and everything that goes with it, and change the world. Thank you. And now, 
The moment we've all been waiting for. We will begin the presentation of diplomas. Mr. Sheehan, please join me at the podium and begin to read the names of our graduates. I would also like to invite members of our school board of directors to the stage to hand out diplomas. Emily Marie Pfeiffer. Sarah Noel Leptuck. Michael Richard Evans. John Patrick Manthorpe. Leah Jane McMillan. Morgan Elizabeth Elmore. Alexia Gabrielle Ritchie. Swati Viperla. Malika Virashendra Yadwad. Vivian Vo Wynn. Joseph Michael Walter. Julia Rose Abenizio. Austin Yu Liao. Joseph Maroon AC. Amanda Mary Liebhart. Kyle Patrick Alec. Taylor Beth Leifer. Akancha Amble. Dylan Padrig Loak. Aaron Stratton Baker. Jason Patrick Lord. Juliana Elizabeth Baker. Elizabeth Mary Luciani. Brandon William Barker. Catherine Ann Luciani. Amanda Grace Bassick. Michael Joseph Majori. Lillian Marie Bauman. Connor Patrick Mallon. Noah Jerome Beebe. Nicholas Trevor Marcelli. Evelyn Blair Berez. Aaron Mary Marshall. Kennedy Lynn Bernard. Morgan Kennedy McBride. Shivani Nagar Bargava. Curtis Allen McCourt. Amanda Joy Boileau. Julia Lynn McCooch. Hannah Lee B. 
Booz. Brianne McDermott. Matthew Andrew Baraski. Kelly Janet McDonald. Jessica Marguerite Brain. Connor J. McElroy. Christopher Simon Braun. Chloe Leon McLewy. Emily Louise Breckbill. Gemma Lynn McNichol. Siddharth Byredy. Kirsten Ashley McQueen. Brian David Cahill. Shannon Brooke McTaggart. Emma Rose Carr. Matthew Cole Miller. Jacob Francis Caesar. Sreya Muchivolu. Mackenzie Renee Chambers. Rachana Moody Polly. Justin Jin Ho Chang. Cameron William Murray. Delaney Elizabeth Channel. Donanjay Norayanan. Matthew Alexander Chapraki. Abigail Elizabeth Nessel. Kevin Michael Cherry Jr. Rachel Elizabeth Nick. Julia Elizabeth Christensen. Sarah Elizabeth Ann Knoll. Tara Lindsay Collier. Jake Thomas O'Neill. <laughs> Catherine Ann Kauser. <laughs> Sophia Anna Orfanakos. Joseph Patrick Coyle Jr. Nathan William Uzi. Caroline Ann Kutara. Vikram Robinder Pal. <laughs> Tanvi Darak. Riley Margaret Palovich. Kelsey Abigail DeAngelis. <laughs> Rohit Reddy Panala. Alicia Gabriella De Simone. Taylor Lynn Patras. Evan Stone Dewey. Haley Elizabeth Peck. Jacob Robert Dewey. Pavani Saruthi Padada. Colin Douglas Dottillo. J. Venkata Siva Sai Chandra Pendiala. <laughs> Max Tyler Doucette. Susanna Jean Parolo. Sidra Ray Anna Marie Druza. <laughs> Jacob Dylan Pomeroy. Christopher Dalton Duke. Brian David Popek. Kelly Marie Dumont. Christopher Stephen Poulis. Jenna Maria Edwards. Julia Rose Powell. Noel Bibi Egbali. 
Mariam Quirashi. Andrew Murray Elliott. Nevena Rado Savjevic. Hallie May Everett. Mackenzie Elizabeth Raymond. Hannah Mary Everett. John Michael Reed. Jasmine Sabrina Ference. Matthew Ryan Riley. Abigail Louise Ferris. Jeffrey Conlon Rhodes. Victor Bartholomew Ficara. Emily Ann Robinson. Cameron Spence Fogarty. Serenia Sampath. Brianna Avila Funk. Gabriel Lynn Sampson. Lance Cameron Gallant. Oliver Michael Santangelo. Sophie Christine Gelling. Max Tucker Savage. Manasa Govindarajula. Cassidy Marie Scheibe. Katie Corinna Grubb. Taylor Morgan Schneeberger. Emily May Grolke. Julie Rebecca Schoen. Benjamin George Gugais. Alexander David Schweizer. Avni Gurajani. Mayharpreet Kaur Sethi. Samantha Julian Hall. Apoorv Singh. Logan Michael Harris. John Edward Sklenar. Isabel Marky Hartenstein. Jonathan Brooke Stewart. Jordan Matthew Hyman. Kate Elizabeth Strachan. Nicholas Edward Helgoth. Amal Subramanya. Devin Marie Higgins. Owen Matthew Sugg. Andrew Wilder Hill. Manish Hari Suryapalam. John Wesley Hollis. Philip Michael Tokar. Brianna Patricia Hughes. Siddhartha Tumala. Karthik Kolothongan Amayavarumban. Taylor Robin Ullman. Dylan Patrick Jackson. Katie Rochelle Urban. Helena Christine Jeroz. <laughs> Krishna Chandana Venigala. <laughs> Himaja Naga Kakumani. Annalise Catherine Warner. Brendan Thomas Kane. 
Matthew Edward Weaver. Shravan Venkata Kanyuparthi. Jennifer Crystal Worth. Jonathan Thomas Kappel. Olivia Kathleen White. Claire Elizabeth Kennedy. Mary Rebecca Williams. Travis Robert King. Abigail Kelly Wilson. Zachary Alexander Kirk. Olivia Claire Wolf. James McGregor Klein. Alice Wu. Annika May Klingen. Hannah J. Yang. Rebecca Elizabeth Kraus. Maria Rose Siloyal. Sophie Alice Lamb. Lillian Paige Zimmerman. Eric Anders Lytle. Charles Ryan Zindel. Dr. Muslin, will you please join me at the podium? Class of 2017, please stand. Dr. Muslin, I present to you the class of 2017 of the Downingtown STEM Academy. As headmaster, I am certifying to you that this class has completed all Pennsylvania statutory requirements for successful completion of high school in the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. If you would, please confer graduation upon these 179 seniors. Thank you, uh, Mr. Campbell. Uh, congratulations to you, Mr. Sheehan, Mr. Jones, and Ms. Mrs. Boardman, um, real drivers behind the place. Congratulations to our excellent teaching staff. As a matter of fact, stay standing. Teachers, stand up. Congratulations to you. Great job this year. Great job. All along the back, too. In the back, around the back, around the side right here. In the back. Thank you. If it wasn't for our teachers and our administrative team, uh, it, it wouldn't be the number one school in the Commonwealth. I can, I, can, I can tell you that much. Congratulations, parents, relatives, and friends for all the support you've given our proud, uh, proud graduates this evening. You know what? They know they wouldn't have made it without your support. So congratulations to you two. Grads, real quick, thank you. My wish for you all is happiness, good health, and the drive to continue to make a difference for others. May you have fair winds and following seas on your way to whatever journey, wherever the journey takes you. Graduates, it's my pleasure to confer upon you the diploma that you have earned 
along with all of the rights and responsibilities associated with that diploma. With the power vested in me by the Downingtown Board of Education and the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania, I pronounce you graduates of the Downingtown STEM Academy. Move your tassels. Congratulations, guys. Thank you, Mark. That was very nice. Thank you. As I stand here and look out onto the sea of graduation caps and the dreams, hope, and desires they represent, I now find myself utterly overwhelmed with emotion. Thank you, graduates, my friends, for all the memories we have made together over the past four years. And before we close this wonderful evening and begin to look onto the next chapter of our lives, the class of 2017 would like to thank the people vital to our success over these years. On behalf of all the seniors sitting here today, I want to thank our teachers for helping us become better students and better people, our parents for understanding and supporting us through our journey and always believing in us, the administration and staff of the STEM Academy that assembled it and the people that have seen it, and to the class, of 2017, remember to remove the tassels. Now, if you would all please join me in celebrating our graduation from the Downtown STEM Academy. Please lift your caps.
Thank you.